there is some liquid that is flowing throughout this entire apparatus and interconnects everything with each other. It starts in my head, it goes into my head, into the neck, then it flows into my shoulders, then it goes into my arms, passes the elbow, passes the wrist, passes my hand, my palm, and through my knuckles and into my fingertips and finally onto the piano. Hi everyone, this is Danai and in today's video I will be talking about how to play the piano without any kind of tension and I will especially be focusing on how to play the piano without any tension in your wrist. This is a question that I've been getting quite a lot lately and today I will be getting into it in detail. I've mentioned little things here and there over my past few videos, but I've never created an entire video dedicated to this topic alone. So today I will be trying to explain it in detail and tell you what to do technique wise in order to make sure that you're not creating any tension in your wrist. When we are playing the piano, the goal always is to create this mixture between a relaxed wrist but also at the same time, the feeling of being in control and being able to create finger independence. Very often in comments, I read you guys telling me that if you relax your wrists completely, you lose control over the fingers. So I'm going to try to explain how to achieve the perfect balance between a relaxed wrist, but at the same time, of course, perfect control in the fingers. So if you're interested in that, then keep on watching. So first of all, before I get into any details, I want to share with you the mental image that I use whenever I think about my body at the piano, which I find very helpful. It's probably self-explanatory, but I'm just going to mention it again, that the entire body posture influences the way we play and influences the way we put pressure and create tension in our wrist. So the way you hold your shoulders, the way you hold your entire upper body, the way you hold your hips, the way you hold your elbows, everything is important. So this entire apparatus, which is our upper body and neck and head, and even the way we have our vision and look at the keys, influence the creation of tension in the wrist. So the mental image that I have is that there is some liquid that is flowing throughout this entire apparatus and interconnects everything with each other. It starts in my head, it goes into my head, into the neck, then it flows into my shoulders, then it goes into my arms, passes the elbow, passes the wrist, passes my hand, my palm, and through my knuckles and into my fingertips and finally onto the piano. And the reason why I imagine it to be a liquid is because I believe that it is very important that this whole apparatus is very fluid and our movements are very fluid. This is, should not feel like a robotic movement or any mechanical thing where you move it here, up and down, but the whole thing should be incredibly fluid. And I like to imagine the energy flowing and the weight and strength flowing from up here to my fingertips. Another image that someone told me once was a tiny ball. So as if there is a tiny little marble ball that's flowing through off your shoulder, through your elbow, into your lower arm, into your wrist, into your fingers, basically meaning that this entire thing is connected and if there's tension here, there will be tension here as well. So this entire thing always releases and relaxes your arms and wrists. But this is just an image that I wanted to mention in the beginning because I always find it helpful and I remember that it helped me also when I was younger and still learning piano technique. So now let's get into the actual tip. So in order to find solutions for tension in the wrist or any type of pain in your wrist, we need to first know the causes and there are different causes that can create this. One of the most common causes is overuse especially when you are playing quite a lot. If you are a student, for example, it is so common that you will start experiencing tension before a competition, before a recital, before an exam, because suddenly you practice more than you usually do. So a sudden increase in practice can result in overuse of the muscles and therefore tension in the wrist. It is important that you know when playing the piano 
that it is not something that you can compare to, for example, lifting weights, that you feel tension in your muscles and then fatigue in your muscles, but that that is normal and in turn means that your muscle is growing. For these muscles here in your lower arm and the muscles that are ultimately connected to the wrist and the fingers, this is not the case. They are not growing and uh, being improved by experiencing fatigue. So whenever you feel tired and a feeling of exhaustion in your muscles and as a consequence of that tension in your wrist, it is a sign of overuse and it is not a positive sign. You need to immediately react to that. Now, this type of feeling, of course, I have experienced as well. I've had my crazy periods where I've practiced all day, day and night and things like that. And of course, sometimes it also resulted in a tense wrist. And the only thing you could do there is definitely take a break, reduce your amount of time that you're practicing. And now the important thing here is don't reduce it completely. Don't stop completely. An interesting fact here is that you don't need to stop completely. If it's just a slight feeling of tiredness and intense wrist, what you can do is just practice less, practice in very short intervals. So let's say 30 minutes, then you take a break, 30 minutes, then you take a break and practice with joy, practice things that you like, practice things that make you happy so that your brain connects positive thoughts to you moving those fingers as opposed to negative thoughts like pain and exhaustion and just feelings of discomfort in your arm and hand and wrist. Now, if you are a beginner or if you just simply don't have time to practice that much, then the cause overuse is probably not why you are experiencing tension in your wrist. A second very common cause of tension in your wrist is the alignment of wrist, hand, fingers, lower arm, elbow, this entire structure, how it is aligned while you play. So, of course, if your wrist is very high and you play like this, it is not helpful because once again, it stops the energy flow, the mental image of the liquid running. It wouldn't be able to run up here. So this is not helpful. If your wrist is extremely low and you're playing like this, once again, the liquid would stop here and not be able to make it to the fingers. So the wrist should be fairly straight, creating a straight line with your underarm through the wrist and then into the fingers that are touching the keys. So this is very important. The second important thing is your elbow. If your elbow is somewhere up here, out there, once again, the liquid cannot flow. It's going to stop at that point. It needs to be placed in a way where it naturally connects the upper arm and the lower arm. Your finger position also plays a role. So if you position your fingers in a natural way like this, it feels different from if you position your fingers curled up extremely like this or lifting them up incredibly high. So all these things influence the tension in your wrist. Of course, ideally, you will place your fingers in a way that is as relaxed as possible, as natural as possible, kind of like this, as if you were grabbing something. My teacher used to tell me, just imagine that you're grabbing an apple, for example, and then have that posture on the piano, a very natural thing for our fingers to be doing. So now let's say that you're not overusing your muscles and your arms and the alignment is perfect. Another cause could be that you're leaving it all up to your fingers and you're not helping with the rest of your body. So depending on what you're playing, it is important that you support your fingers and your wrist with the rest of your body. For example, if you're playing something way over on the right, then it's good to help by moving the body to the right and therefore taking some of the tension and difficulty and strain off of the wrist. You can help your wrist by using the arm in a correct way. You can help your wrist by moving your elbow when needed. Of course, not if you're playing right in front of yourself to lift up the elbows like that. But if you're somewhere on the far right, of course, lift the elbow a little bit in order to make the movement more fluid. Once again, I'm coming back to the mental image of the fluid because I find that this helps in all of these situations. One important tip connected to that is one that my teacher told me very often, and it is that your wrist needs to be able to give in if someone pushes your elbow. So if I'm playing the piano right now, and here are my keys, 
and I push my elbow, my wrist should give in because it is that relaxed. If it's tense and I push, then my entire arm would move. But if it's relaxed, then the wrist will give in. And I totally remember that in piano lessons, I would be playing through Chopin studies, definitely technically challenging stuff. And he would just randomly come up behind me and push my elbow. And if my wrist didn't go up, he would be, uh oh, Danai, you are tense right now. You're not doing it right. And I would have to start over. Because if you're tense, once again, then the whole arm moves. And then you are definitely at risk of creating tension in your wrist. An exercise that I do in order to avoid exactly that is that I place my finger on a key. You've probably seen me do it a couple of times. It's in my warm up routine. I place my finger on a key and just simply move my entire wrist clockwise and counterclockwise. And then I do this with every finger. I place my second finger on a key and move the entire wrist clockwise and counterclockwise and then with the third finger. And this is just to kind of create an awareness of where my wrist is, how it feels, when it is high, how it feels, when it is low, but also to just kind of release any tension and to just create a released and relaxed state in my entire upper body. And the fourth cause that I would like to mention that can create tension in your wrist is overall bad posture. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, the way you sit at the piano influences everything. So, of course, it kind of goes without saying that your posture will influence it too. But for me especially, it is so important that I always remind myself that, for example, pulling my shoulders up will result in tension in my wrist as well. Because this is one of my problems when I get into a hard passage, I very often pull my shoulders up. So I always need to remind myself of that, even if I'm doing all the other things correctly, but my shoulders are up. Once again, the fluid and the, the flowing energy is interrupted because with high shoulders, the liquid cannot go down into my fingers. So my shoulders need to be down in order for everything to flow freely. So generally, I would say that it really helps to remind yourself that this whole act of playing the piano is a very fluid motion. It's something that should not be forced. It's something that should not be sudden or robotic. It's very fluid. The energy should be flowing and your wrist is a point in that apparatus that is very delicate and that you need to be careful of. So this is why you can use your entire body to help that. One last thing that I want to mention is exercise because this is also a question that I get sometimes how much a pianist should or would be allowed to exercise in order to avoid any pain in the wrist. Generally, I would say that anything is allowed. I don't think that it is problematic to lift weights or to do anything like that. I am a big yoga person. I do a lot of yoga. I do yoga every day. This also sometimes is a little bit difficult for the wrist. However, of course, I would always say within reason. So for example, for me, when I'm doing yoga, of course, I try to avoid all the handstand positions. I don't spend 20 minutes just standing on my hands or doing any positions like that. So I think that would be a little bit unnecessary. Same with, for example, if you're doing push-ups that you where you jump off the floor and then fall on your wrists. Well, yeah, especially on your wrists again. I think this probably is also not so ideal. So definitely within reason. But generally, I would say that you should not refrain from any exercise. On the contrary, having a strong body and having a fit body and feeling healthy, of course, always helps with you playing the piano as well. So overly, make sure that you have a good body posture. Don't do anything that is incredibly hard for your wrist. But other than that, I would say that you could do anything that other people do as well. Before I finish this video, I want to mention one more thing. I haven't talked about it here for a while, but I did mention it when it had first started. I'm talking about the war that is still going on in Ukraine. I just think that it's important to remind ourselves that this is still happening. It's still very real and to not stop helping or giving any support that we can. I, for my part, am hosting right now again a mother with her son that is staying with us in our house right now 
and it is just so shocking to hear their stories what they have seen what they have gone through and what many of their friends and family are going through I'm getting so many messages because I'm active on different platforms of people that need a place to stay. They tell me that they are, uh, for example, mothers with babies, with really young, just couple of months old babies, and they're staying in these camps where they have almost nothing. And it is so hard for me, especially hearing that as a mom that also had two very little babies once to hear that. And I can only encourage everybody that has the means to help, whether it is donating, whether it is giving food, whether it is giving things, whether it is hosting somebody, whatever you can, please do it. Please help. Please help anyone in need. I think that if we all just take little steps and do what we can, then as a collective, we can create so much and help so many people. So yes, this is not really connected to my video. I just wanted to mention it once again because it is so important to me and because it is on my mind so much. But I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. That would help me a lot. And I will see you again in the next video next week. Bye.